work tracking boards like this will emerge from it. And this gives you instant status on every bit of detailed work that is flowing through the project team at any moment. And um, a, a quick hint, if you look at your work tracking system and you've got three statuses, one is not started, one is in progress, and one is done, then you have no way of knowing what actual status of anything is at any given time or when anything is going to be done. You need to actually give visibility to the major uh, the major types of work in the basic software development lifecycle. And of course, uh, over the last you know, almost 25 years, Agile has changed the industry to work in a one piece at a, at a time uh, process through the software development life cycle, as opposed to taking large batches of features and trying to move them through all in large batches. So agile shrunk the batch size way, 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 way down and mature, really mature agile teams are down to a batch size of one. Whereas for a long time, the batch size was, oh, we're going to have a two week sprint and we're going to have, you know, some number of backlog items or user stories, and we're going to work in a batch. And through that sprint, we're going to try to get that batch into production. Well, teams that have gone through that stage and continue to mature realize that, okay, well, two week, two week sprint, that's just like an arbitrary batch size. Why? And then they go down to a one week batch size from just an organizational perspective. But from a technical perspective, They've kind of shunned the notion of an iteration or a sprint altogether and really just have single, single, um, single feature or, or single backlog item um, batch sizes. And any individual item can move through independently and you just keep things flowing through. The most mature teams just naturally arrive at a batch size of one. Then the question is decomposition and and work assignment. So if we have a development column in the middle of our board where the code is actually written, then we naturally have to break items down uh, in that process. But there are four distinct design decisions that have to be made in order to write the proper code. And the first one is, well, what the heck are we building? That's concept definition. And we need to have a specific stage for where we're thinking about what the heck this feature actually is, defining the concept. And then there's another decision in order to write the, the appropriate code. We have to figure out how a user, how someone's actually going to use it. Um, and not just what they're going to look at, because a lot of software features don't even have anything to look at. If you're just processing data under the covers or moving data from computer A to computer B, there's plenty of software behaviors and features that don't necessarily have anything to look at, but you're always going to have some way for a user to experience the goodness that we want. For example, we might want, uh, I don't know, some text message notifications to pop up, you know, if certain things happen, or we might want data A, data to be moved from A to B within five minutes. And it would be a very poor user experience if the data took six hours to get where it needed to go. So we need to make decisions about how will a user actually get the benefit from this change? And then after that, we have to make the decisions about what technologies to, to employ, what architectural elements are necessary, what design patterns uh, should we use? And, and that goes into the technical design. We need to make all the decisions about how we should be making this new user experience a reality in the software system that we currently have. And also, making a decision whether a particular feature would cause the sprouting of a separate software application and a separate code base. You know, we have to ask that question. And that's where also we start breaking features into smaller features because oftentimes uh, a feature is too big to just say, okay, now let's, let's give this to a developer and just start working on the feature because in invariably, um, the developer is not going to have the the complete design, and and once we do have a, a complete understanding of the appropriate design, we also tend to have a complete understanding of all the pieces that need to be implemented. So those go hand in hand. 